my dear young ladies and gentlemen to say that i am pleased to see you all would be an understatement when uh, we started the omega school 8 years back i think apart from the aspirations of others involved in the process who wanted to turn out top level students and so on and so forth my inspiration which i did not my aspiration which i did not voice was to produce excellent human beings with aspiration not ambition as their guiding light who would be future citizens of india you know well equipped with the strength of the heart with the courage of the heart to participate in what is mundanely called a new india in the making of a new india you know, which would be free morally free intellectually free where you would all be able to voice without concern for safety the need for truth honesty openness in either public or private administration in fact to create a society of which our people have been talking for centuries the so called ram rajya you know but which has never been achieved over i don't know 3000 3000 years 4000 years because when you watch serials like the ramayana or the mahabharata you find out how much how much dishonesty untruth lies what in hindi you call chal and kapat have pervaded public life whether under monarchies or under the different systems of political administration in fact i don't see any india if you look to the past where there was honesty and truth except for the rishis preaching it for the upanishad which enshrined it and for the very few who were in jungles and in mountains practicing austerity and tapas free of political and other influences to practice a true life in their own personal life and nothing more they were unable to you know influence society because they were far away from society in fact they had renounced the society and become recluses in forests in mountain caves in isolation and of course history does not record what they achieved except what we call personal emancipation so in those days i mean in all the past centuries that we have seen there were the few who preached the truth and practiced it and where the, there were the many who perhaps knew the truth but did not practice it where ambition was there where you know anxiety to abas more and more was there where dishonesty pervaded public life whether it's in commercial industry or in government so do i hate to say it i feel that indian life has always been <laughs> it what they would like to call a stinking lie you know 
సత్యం వద నెవర్ డన్ ధర్మం చర నెవర్ డన్ ఐడియల్స్ యూ సీ గ్రేట్ రిషీస్ వర్ కిల్ ఓర్ మర్డర్డ్ బై కింగ్స్ హూ ఆర్ సీ ఎంపరర్స్ ఫైటింగ్ ఫర్ మోర్ అండ్ మోర్ టెరిటరీ చల్ అండ్ కపర్ ట్రూలింగ్ దేర్ లైఫ్స్ సో ఇఫ్ అట్ ఆల్ యూ నో వీ సీ న్యూ ఇండియా ఎమర్జింగ్ విత్ యూ బాయ్స్ అండ్ గర్ల్స్ పార్టిసిపేటింగ్ ఇన్ దట్ రెనెసాన్స్ అస్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు కాల్ ఇట్ it would be something in the history of india very new never achieved before not in the life of the great rishis not in the life of the great emperors not in the vedic age but in kali yuga where brave hearts and minds will contribute to such renaissance and where history will record that after tens of thousands of years of a public life which was wanting in every aspect of truth of culture of openness behold there's a new india created by young men and lay women of this age which is supposed to be full of corruption of misery in public life public life private life of fear no I don't see anybody who today who is not afraid. You go to register a piece of land, you have to pay bribes. You go for an application form, you have to give money to obtain it. You go for admission, you have to pay hefty bribes. Whether it is engineering or medical or whatever it is. So what happens? Where is the India that was great? you know i frequently refer to a book written by rockson professor hale bashan which have, which impressed me very much when i read it about 60 years ago i think the title was the glory that was india or something like that and he is full of praise for india and its culture its background but 20 years later he comes back to india and finds you know under a superficial veneer of so called culture and civilization there was nothing but corruption mental corruption moral corruption every aspect of corruption and in fact in the preface to his book the second time he wrote he said he was sorely disappointed with what he saw and he was almost recanting what he had written about india in that book i would like you all to read that book if you have access to it in the libraries the wonder that was india professor a l basham b a s h a m please note it down to try to get a copy and read it for you have leisure so you see great men from the western countries have admired us have admired our uh, culture our you know the way of life simplicity but then they would you go penetrate a little deeper it's all muck and many were disappointed see and many wrote about it much to my regret you know and people like me who sorrowed that this is the way things are going you know that people who admired us are saying i was wrong i have nothing to admire here it's worse than any other place and of course if you read the newspapers and you see the index you know <laughs> the corruption index and you find you are number 3 out of a list of 78 almost near the top i don't know i mean sometimes i wonder what we are doing living here you know we say it is wonderful to be born in this country which has so much hope for us but hopes remain hopes aspirations are shattered 
people are disillusioned by the time they come to their thirties, and the rest of life is just you know spent in a misery of what should I call not guilt but sorrow that things are as they are and nothing is ever going to change. Nobody thinks that India will change, you see. I always tell them that India is not responsible. It is Indians who are responsible. So when I say that I have great expectations from our Omega and its product, some of the first of them, you are here, you know. I hope you all understand that you have a great responsibility to not only your own future, for which of course, obviously everybody is responsible, but for the future of this country, to bring it back to its pristine glory, if, it, if ever it was like that, to realize what the rishis have always said must be there. It is perhaps buried deep in our roots, but has not come up into the foliage, is not out in the open in the sunshine. So you see, you must always remember that there is this responsibility which must be in your hearts that I am doing things, of course, for myself, for my family, but very importantly, if not most importantly, <coughs> for my country. So that is what I have to say to all of you today, you know. I remember when I was in school, for 70 years back, I was an idealist like most young people are, you know. I used to attend Congress meetings. It was before, part before partition, before India became independent. And there was a great deal of fervor and, you know, we used to march miles with the holding the Congress flag. We used to spend hours waiting to see Gandhi or Nehru. We used to go to our college gate, university gate in Bananas, for the, you know, unfailing of the flag, unveiling of the flag, and then singing Jana Ganamana, and almost with tears in our eyes. That was uh, how children are brought up when they're young. Aspiration, full, of, full in the heart, and there is no distinction between self and our country, or self and society. I am a part of that. I may have an independent existence, but without the whole, I am nothing. See, this was the sort of uh, spirit we had. And my first adventure with truth was a disaster. My chemistry teacher took an English class because the Englishman, the teacher was absent. And there was a particular word, unanimous. He was spelling it as A-N-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S. I made the mistake of standing up and saying, sir, your, your uh, spelling is wrong. He glared at me, you know, and said, don't teach me English. I was a fool. Next day, I took a copy of my pocket Oxford dictionary and showed him that there are two words, anonymous and unanimous. And I made an enemy for life. That is the sort of, uh, you know, leadership we have in our schools. Teachers who do not want to be corrected. Teachers with whom you cannot have a fair exchange. Unlike USA where, you know, you can sit with your feet up on the desk and talk to your professor who's standing. Full freedom, you know. Here, yeah, no. Therefore, you know, we lead a stifled existence in our schools where from kindergarten, you know, miss says means it is the law. And in that situation, in that environment, you know, of teaching which is bounded by the corruption of teachers, by their lack of knowledge, in fact, 
I would go to the extent of saying that none, more, very few of them are really prepared for their jobs, except to earn money. It was like that. I don't know what it is today. I hope in at least in Omega things are different. Therefore, you see, unless you have freedom there, you cannot have freedom here. When you plant a sapling and put a tight thing around it, how can it grow except in the way it is put? So we grow up thinking my teacher did not tell me the truth, my family did not tell me the truth. Always they were, they were covering a place, deceits. Wherever you went, there was a hush of silence, then a smile of knowingness, then a new subject. I'm sure we have seen all this. If not, you will. And the problem, first problem is to not change, not allow yourselves to be changed by this sort of environment. We are there to change others, not to be changed ourselves, like a catalyst, you know. A catalyst changes, but it never changes, it is always there. So I hope you'll all be catalysts of the future. Unafraid, not proud, but happy to be there, to have been given an opportunity to stand up and speak, you know, thankful to whatever it is, the spirit of India or the spirit of culture or which gives you this opportunity to be what you are and not what you are meant to be. See? Remember that you have to be what you are and not what you are meant to be by society. Society may expect you to be so many things. Obedient, defiant, you know, lying, you know, colluding in, uh, you know, bribery and corruption, what sort of things. There you are safe and you get your chunk of the profit, but you will spend sleepless nights worried over what to do if something happens. Whereas if you are truthful, you will live a solid, happy, pleasant life and then you go out to your, no, knowing that it is contentment that is happiness, not the other way around. I have not seen contentment in people who have 20,000 crores, 100,000 crores, 200,000 crores, because they want more and more. On one side, they're terribly afraid. If this happens, if that happens, where is their money? Something here, something there. I, I had an industrial, industry friend, you know, who, who made it this time 50 years ago, a few hundred crores and starting up a new industry and entrusted everything to his levy of Bailami transactions, you know, false documents. All sorts of funny things, he entrusted it to the nephew. Who controlled this uh, hundred crores of uh, black money that the uncle had earned? And the uncle had given it to the nephew so that he is free from, you know, even raids and things like that. And one day the nephew just said, Tata had walked out. The uncle said, where is my money? He said, what money? See, this is what happens to most people who cannot keep it, but they have to entrust it to others and who enjoy it merely. Whether it is in a Swiss bank or wherever it is. So contentment, that is what we have to learn. You know, that I must be content with what I am, with what I have, and then I am fearless. Because otherwise, if I am always avaricious and thinking of more and more, I am a servant. Not even a master of myself. So, I hope the school has done its duty properly by you all and taught you well and, you know, that Sahaj Marg will polish up your character, your freedom, give you the strength 
to be what you are, to be independent of all influences and to contribute, as I said, to an emerging India, which shall be free, which shall be honest, which shall be, you know, in public and private life, as it was never before. So I pray for you all and thank you for being here. Thank you.